Tonight, a united opposition in the country can check electoral fraud, says Professor Maurice Camto, the president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, while the president of the CRM is in favor of an opposition coalition in the country. A group of 20 opposition leaders have reiterated their support for the CPDM natural candidate. President Paul Bia in this newscast will tell you why they were meeting in the country's economic capital Douala today. Or also ahead, we talk about the Minister of Territory Administration, Paul Atanganji, that has maintained that the President of the Republic of Cameroon has urged all administrative authorities to ensure that the population in the two Anglophone regions of the country are protected. We also talk about post election violence in Zimbabwe, MSN Monangangwa that has emerged victorious following the election that took place Monday this week. Those are headlines. We shall be right back with Lady Do. Stay with us. Good evening to you ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for joining us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. The president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement has said that the doors of his party are opened to other opposition party leaders willing to be part of a coalition to unseat the current regime in Cameroon. Professor Maurice Camto visited the Equinox TV head office in Douala. That was yesterday said that a united opposition can help curb electoral fraud and irregularities. The CRM president is, however, worried about how the campaign and voting processes would unfold in the conflict hit northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon. Let's have the details in this report. I consider myself as a genuine citizen of this country. Professor Maurice Camto, president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, is confident that the 2018 electoral year would be historic. But for the opposition to succeed, there is need for them to come together. We are doing our best. Should we be uh, forced or to, to go alone, then we'll do so because we are a political party and we promise uh, to our militants and to Cameroonians that we have been working very hard for the past five years to reach that point that we'll go to election to win the election. That's why we did our homework seriously. We took it very seriously. I really desire to be part of a coalition and I work hard to that. The CRM president is now mapping ways to bring the opposition together so that they can join and fight against electoral fraud and irregularities. I tried to meet with uh, virtually all the leaders of uh, 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 opposition. You know, Some were very open and thanks God probably will do something together. Others were maybe a little bit reluctant, uh, but we are still in touch. That's why I say I will uh, inform Cameroonians uh, after the ELECAM has published or uh, has released the list of uh, the official candidates of the outcome of our uh, meetings and contact with the other leaders of the opposition. Although we are prepared, and I promise Cameroonians that we will we'll put uh, our invigilators uh, our observers uh, in the, all the police stations throughout the country, I still think that if we are uh, many of us from the opposition to be uh, in, the, uh, in the polling station, will be stronger and make sure that there will be less fraud or cheating of the... How the campaign and election would unfold in conflict hit northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon was another preoccupation. For the past two years, we have been asking the government to settle the matter. It is, and now we are in a situation where Cameroonians are shooting on Cameroonians. And, but it is the government who convened the elections, knowing that they didn't settle the matter, that uh, there is a uh, war-like situation going on in the, in the Northwest and Southwest. We are looking forward to seeing what they are going to do. Are they going to campaign there? Then we'll go to campaign because it makes that they, 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 they would make sure that they assure the security for all of us. The president of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement has described the convened Anglophone General Conference as a laudable initiative and called on all Cameroonians of goodwill to give dialogue a chance. I'm very hopeful that such a conference can bring, uh, can, can bring a way out. First of all, because 
you know, I don't understand why some Cameroonians are reluctant. We are really a funny country. I don't know exactly what we want. Like I say, for the past two years, years the government did not or could not settle the matter. Now people are say, people say we are going to organize a conference. We are going to gather and reflect on how to cool down the situation and see the way out, and maybe to identify who will be our representative in any dialogue. And you say they are not entitled to do so, or it is not a, a good initiative. So I can't understand. And on top of that, I think that all Cameroonians uh, have the right to come together to reflect on whatever issue concerning the nation and bring out their own solution or suggestion. Dialogue. If fighters from both camps drop their weapons. That is uh, the president of the Camel Renaissance Movement, Professor Maurice Camto. They're speaking. He's, he's talking about uh, opposition coalition in the country, but uh, he's talking about it at the time when some leaders and supporters of some 20 opposition party that have so far been supporting President Pobia to run for another term in office convert chair on the country's economic capital dollar to explain why they are standing or rallying behind the head of state. Some of them have said that President Pobia has the experience and the wisdom which no other aspirant wants or has. It was during a press conference which took place in the country's economic capital dollar today. Uh, Jean de Diomomo of the Padek political party said that members who crossed carpets have uh, been uh, replaced and that there is no problem at the level of the Padek political party. It was during the press conference which took place in the city of Douala today. Let's now get the reactions of some of the participants at the press conference today in the city of Douala that were speaking to Innocent Aze. We took our time and uh, studied the files of all the uh, prospective candidates and uh, we saw that the only candidate that has experience to rule Cameroon at this time of crisis is Paul Bia. Let us face facts. It is not the right moment to change the aim of a country when region of Cameroon the recent trouble with the Northwest and the Southwest region, the so-called Anglophone problem that has brought this issue of uh, secessionists. I played football when I was young. You, maybe you did. And uh, you get to a point where you realize that somebody has to score the goal. You pass the ball to him. For now, Paul Beer is the only person. He has the wisdom, he has the experience of leadership. We just decided to withdraw that let the country not run into a mess with people who don't have the wisdom of leadership, who don't have the experience of leadership. And we have a lot of them. Uh, Kawala was against without actually knowing what it means to be against. In leadership, Kawara cannot compare the leadership of Pobia, the wisdom of Pobia. She cannot. The leadership of Pobia, the wisdom of Pobia, that's experience, I mean. Opposition party leaders converging here on the country's economic capital dollar. And in the second part of this newscast, Edith Kabangwala, that is the president of the Cameroon People's Party, is going to be our guest tonight. Now, the Minister of Territory Administration, Paul Atanganji, has made it crystal clear that uh, the state has given him firm instructions to ensure the adequate protection of the people in the conflict hit northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon. Minister Paul Atanganji was speaking while receiving some faculty chiefs uh, as uh, they who were recently release, released from captivity. He praised the traditional rulers as well as the efforts of the mayor of the Boya municipality for standing firm and calling for the release of the traditional rulers that were picked up 
a few days ago in the southwest region of Cameroon. Uh, it should be noted that the minister equally talked about the necessity for Cameroon being a one and indivisible nation. We, of course, will be coming back to that in our subsequent newscast. Now, scandal hits another public hospital in Cameroon. Shocking pictures of nursing mothers and their newborn babies went viral on social media. It took place at the central hospital in Yaoundé. In the past two, 24 hours, the pictures have triggered nationwide and international reactions. Sources from the maternity ward of the Yaoundé Central Hospital and Mother and Child Hospital as well have testified that they were retained by medical officials of unpaid bills after several days or after delivery. A majority of the victims had their babies through operation and the director of the central hospital today met a press declaration indicating that the pictures that went viral on social media between yesterday and today were simply fake. He said that the duty of the hospital is to ensure the proper treatment of patients, especially expectant mothers. The director did not rule out the possibility that those those with unpaid bills are in the hospital. He, however, stressed that the proper management of patients is a necessity, especially in the Yaoundé Central Hospital. It was during the press conference that took place today. We have been investigating the situation. We, of course, will be telling you more on that in our subsequent newscast. We take you now to the southwest region of Cameroon. The Limbe Free and Tico Mangrove Conservation Project is facing tough times, especially with high exploitation, a situation which continues to expose the population of the municipality to more danger, especially during this period of the rainy season. A reporter that Rijato spoke with some of the experts in the southwest region of Cameroon and compiled this report. Mangroves are breeding ground for aquatic life. So as you can see, when you were walking alongside like that, you saw the, the young fish, they were playing around. Their parents have come and they, are, they lay the eggs and the, the, the young ones will grow. The Tico Limbe Tiri Red Plus project is celebrating the 2018 World Mangroves Day at the Miselele Creeks, a move to better spread the message of mangroves conservation, for it is a need in the environment. Why this project? This project is going to be is, is put in place to fight against climate change. That's the principal objective. To Mr. Kendo Zedekaya, coordinator of the Participatory Integrated ecosystem service management plan for Bakasi post-conflict ecosystem project. Mangroves are today being violently exploited. The rate at which mangroves is being exploited is very alarming and if nothing is done, we are definitely going to have a planet without mangroves. Talking to the community on the danger if mangroves is finally extinct, Mr. Kendo Zedekaya challenged the villages found in mangroves area to be conservators of their immediate environment for a secured future. The mangroves actually play a very, they, they play a defensive role when it comes to coastal uh, erosion and coastal protection. They serve as the first line of defense or the first line of boundary between man and the, and, and, and the sea. What happens is when tides become so high and we have no mangroves around the communities, we realize that the, inc the, the impact of flooding or the incidence of flooding becomes even enormous in those communities and realize that there is loss of life, there is loss of property, there is loss of a lot of things. And the news out of Cameroon, it is a new dawn in Zimbabwe after Emerson Munangangwa was voted as president after several years of rule by Robert Mugabe. It should be noted that he got 50.8% of the votes as against 443 for the main opposition leader as well as uh, we now talk about the situation as well in Mali where the voters are going to be going for the second round to the polls that is in the coming hours. Let's have the details on our foreign page roundup with Simanji Kangebri. After failing to pick up the 50% votes required to get outright victory, incumbent president of Mali, Ibrahim Bubaka Keita, with 41.4%, and his opponent, Sumaila Sisi, with 17.8%, will have to go for a run of polls to decide who becomes Malian's president. The rerun of election in Mali has been stated for later this month. During the last presidential polls, 43% turnout rate was recorded. Nangagwa Emerson Dambuzo of ZANU-PF party is therefore 
duly declared elected president of the Republic of Zimbabwe with effect from the 3rd of August 2018. In Zimbabwe, MSM Nangagwa with 2.46 million votes, equating 50.8%, escaped a rerun of presidential elections to become Zimbabwe's president after the reign of Robert Mugabe. Opposition leader Nelson Chamisa got 2.14 million votes or 44.3 percent according to the Electoral Commission. We are happy and we are, we are hoping for a lot. Our new president has been telling us a lot of things that he is promising us. This is a new Zimbabwe, new dispensation. We are happy as the youth. We are also willing to support our president. The results were released by the Electoral Commission days after six persons were killed due to tension across Zimbabwe. And now on to sports. Elements of the 20th Fire Unit have rounded up with the sporting week. In Cameroon, the event that uh, finished with the finals in all the disciplines saw the 2017 contingent picking up the cup in volleyball finals, beating the veterans, while the emerge 2014-2015 uh, contingent, or the merch rather 2014-2015 contingent, won the football trophy. The inter contingent tournament started on the 5th of July 2018. We are going to be having an except of the assistant commander of the 20th Fire Unit, Major Tuntu Leonardo is going to be talking about the objective of the sports competition. Let's hear him in the following excerpt. For some time we have been working like firefighters in, constituted in teams. And we noticed that the firefighters, the main objective of a firefighter is to have linked with your, your partner. So we created this first uh, competition that concerns all the contingents we have in the 20th fire group so as to, to, to bring together all our comrades, let to reinforce that spirit of togetherness so that when we are working not only in our interventions but even in our daily activities, there should be that link that is reinforced between our fellow uh, comrades. Three main disciplines were retained for this competition. We had football, volleyball and some aspects of gymnastics that are specific to the firefighters. For example, we had the, the bar fix where the firefighters develop their muscles in order to uh, be able to go over obstacles during intervention. And another particular aspect of gymnastics that we call the plank, something that is peculiar to firefighters, which develops that aptitude of climbing obstacles in order to rescue and save lives. And that brings us to the end of this first segment of the news. Up next is Talking Point. We shall be right back. Madam Edith Kawala is our guest tonight. As I indicated, she is the national president of the Cameroon People's Party. Madam, uh, Madam Edith Kawala, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Good evening and a pleasure to be here after a little while. Yeah, uh, of course, good evening to all those who are watching out there. This should be your first uh, TV appearance since the decision by the Minister of Territorial Administration, uh, Paula Tanganji, to uh, recognize Mr. Tita Samuel as leader of the CPP political party. After that move, the state has decided, what has the CPP leader that you are? What have you done? Oh, this, um, this move, first of all, it is important to note that uh, it is completely illegal. There is no law in Cameroon that allows the Minister of Territorial Administration to enter into the workings of a political party and to nominate anybody, let alone uh, the presidents of parties, as he has done uh, with several parties. Um, so, uh, number one is that we have written to the minister um, to inform him that he's, uh, he got confused somehow. He, you know, he's also a militant of the CPDM. And uh, since he has a candidate for the election, he's looking for people to support his candidate. But he cannot confuse his minister role with his militant role. So he went and nominated people who are all coming out to support his candidate. 
which he's free to do. He's free to go and canvass Cameroonians and ask them to support his candidates. But he, as a minister, he must m work within the law and within administrative procedure. He has done neither. So we have written to him. The second thing is that we have taken him to court because uh, he has created a lot of confusion in uh, the public arena um, with this type of uh, with this type of, of, of action and I can also tell you that today I was visiting the administrative authorities here in Douala uh, because not only after he signed his order he also gave orders for our premises to be surrounded uh, people went so far as coming to my home uh, 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 under the pretext of uh, notifying me of, of, of decisions and uh, we had to remind the administrative authorities that uh, they cannot overstep their bounds. So what have you been able to do? What has changed between the moves that you've taken so far? I, I should note that it's more than one week now that you've been yes. taking that decision to yes. take a court action and write to the minister. minister yes. What has changed? Any response so far? No, no response. We are very used to the government of Cameroon. Uh, they commit an illegality you write to them, you take them to court, they will drag it out in court. Nothing has changed for us. As you know, everybody knows the CPP. You know who the national president is, you know who the secretary general is, you know who the, the, the various secretary generals are. They have been on the media and there is no dissent within the leadership of the CPP. There's no disturbance whatsoever. So we are carrying out our party meetings, conducting our activities with no So you remain whatsoever. the president of the Cameroon People's Party? Absolutely. The pre a, a political party is governed by its constitution. And in almost all political parties that I know of, the president is not nominated. The president is elected by a congress. You, you go to a congress, we went to a congress in 2014 where myself, Frank Essi, Bergeline Dumu, Edna Gillin, all of the people whom you know of the CPP were elected during that con congress. So we are the leadership of the party. For us to be removed, it is only that congress that to has sit the power again to do so. and to elect new, uh, new people. So it is, it is actually terrible because the Minister of Territorial Administration is one of the ministries that is supposed to help us to structure but according to the our minister, political life. He's actually structuring. No, he's especially not. Especially the op opposition. No, he is not. The opposition parties that were having internal conflicts. So he no, says that. Where is the conflict? The move I think, is to restore I, order. I think it's in this also important parties. for you journalists to ask the minister proper questions. Where is the conflict? If, 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 you, if we are in conflict inside the CPP and the minister is notified of a conflict, I imagine somebody had to notify him. We did not notify him of any conflict in the CPP. If somebody notified him, then the normal thing for a minister to do would have been to communicate to us that he has been notified and hear from both parties of, of, uh, in our us. party. The first time we had information that the ministry is aware of any conflict in the CPP was during his communique where he nominated a new person. We have never been contacted by his ministry, neither by telephone, nor in person, nor in writing. What type of administration? Are we doing in Cameroon? No, no. The, the, the CPP is functioning normally, like you said. Yes. Uh, the CPP has taken a stance uh, with regards to the Anglophone General Conference convened by Christian Cardinal Tumi and a good number of religious officials and actors of the civil society. So far, we've been having diverse reactions, uh, people condemning, others praising that it is actually a positive move uh, to take Cameroonians, especially the English-speaking population, out of the current socio-political crisis in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon. What is your view or perception with regards to these divergent views yes. on this initiative? Well, the CPP has come out very, very clearly. We think this is a positive step. You know our stance. We are for political transition in Cameroon. Within political transition is what we call national dialogue. And this initiative is placed as a precursor to national dialogue. That is, we should have an all-anglophone dialogue to 
set a minimum agenda. I think amongst the Anglophone population, you have at least three different points of view, at least. But I think the three main points of view are those who still want a unitary state, so they are pro-government, pro this current regime. There are those who are pro-independence, they want to leave uh, 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 the, um, the, 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 union. the union, and then the there are those who, are, who feel that we must resolve the problem of the rights of Anglophones, but we should stay within the union and have a different form of state. Most of those federalism, whether they are two state, four state, ten state, whatever, but they are federalists. Mm -hmm. Now, all of these groups, I think, agree on certain things. All of these groups agree that Anglophones are marginalized, they and are discriminated against, and that there is a problem. So, it, the, the, in my understanding, the, the, the objective is to agree on this minimum agenda so that if we are going to a national dialogue, there, uh, there are at least the points of consensus before everybody is coming to say, no, we want independence, or we want federalism, or we want to stay. But at least as Anglophones, we no, have no, a minimum agenda. The conveners agenda. have given, uh, uh, outlined certain preconditions. Yes. Like the release of those that have, have been arrested in connection with the crisis, and to let those who are in the diaspora come and take part yes. in the dialogue. What do you have to say about that? Do we, you think it's an encouraging... Uh, recommendation yes we totally agree that you cannot have dialogue under stress you cannot have dialogue uh, where some people are threatened one number two is that these three uh, tendencies which I have just outlined must all be at the table and for us most important are those who want to leave because if you are constructing a house those who have already agreed to stay, well, you will figure your way out. But those who are saying we want to leave are the most important people to have at the table so that you can discuss with them. So we must have all of these people at the table. Now, there is nobody who is a separatist who is going to come and sit at that table if they are not guaranteed a that minimum amount arrested. of security. So it is important for the state to agree to this. The leadership of this tendency has been arrested by the government of Cameroon. Once again, an illegal arrest. It is normal that they should release their leadership so that their leadership can come what and about, discuss. What about the venue, Boya, where we are seeing people contesting that it's not supposed to take place in the southwest regional headquarters of you know, Boya? Another venue could uh, be... Could be I think, I think the venue is the least of our worries. It's, Let it's us worry not. about participation. Let us worry about the safety and the security of all those who are going to participate. And we can hold this uh, conference anyway. But I do want to outline uh, Mr. Mayor of Boya uh, is as confused as his minister, uh, Mr. Tanganji. I think they are friends from what I can uh, But you cannot. <laughs> from what I can ascertain. They are just doing their job. But they, no, they, they are, are confused. Doing, they are, they are just confused doing their because job. once again, no law allows a mayor to stop any type of event in Cameroon. There's no law which allows that. He's overstepping his bounds. There's no law. He, ca he can go and appeal to his district officer, but he, he does not have the right to stand up and say he will stop a conference from taking place. As who? Under what law? Thank we, you. we must we must uh, uh, keep to the rules in in Cameroon. Already the rules are not very good, so we better keep to, be the, to, to the little <laughs> the few that we have. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have you some other time again. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and to all the militants of the CPP out there, I congratulate you for standing strong and standing firm. We can never support the candidacy of Mr. Bia. Thank you so much. Maybe for the coalition opposition, maybe you stand for the coalition. No, we stand for political transition. Transition, thank you so much. As we have always done. Of course. Thank okay. you so much. And to our viewers, we thank you as well for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs until we meet again. Goodbye. <laughs>